it's very likely that neither you nor I have a real sense of our galaxy's true size. Even if we think of the Milky Way as something gigantic, it's still just a neighborhood within the local group, which, in turn, is only a tiny slice of the observable universe. And despite that almost incomprehensible scale, figuring out our cosmic address inside the Milky Way itself has always been a huge challenge. It's not easy to map the neighborhood when we're stuck inside it, surrounded by dust, gas, and billions of stars that confuse our view. Even so, thanks to modern mapping missions, we now have a much clearer idea of where we are. In this video, we're going to explore exactly that, our location in the Milky Way and why it matters. If we could pull back far enough and look at the Milky Way from the outside, we'd see a colossal disk of stars, gas, and dust, with a bright core in the center and spiral arms stretching in every direction. That elegant shape didn't just appear out of nowhere, it's the result of billions of years of gravitational interactions, the births and deaths of stars, and the collective motion of matter. Our galaxy, although similar to many others in the universe, has particular traits that make it unique. Its estimated diameter is around 100,000 light years, a number that's a brain twister on its own, and it hosts countless stellar systems, plus an invisible halo of dark matter that extends beyond the visible disk and helps hold it all together. One of the most striking structures is the so-called central bar, an elongated strip of older stars that cuts through the core. That bar isn't there for decoration. It influences how gas and dust are redistributed across the disk, steering material toward regions where new stars can form. Bars like this are common in spiral galaxies and can play an important role in the internal traffic of matter, including funneling some of that material toward the galactic center and feeding the supermassive black hole that lives there. In the Milky Way's case, that black hole is known as Sagittarius, a star, and it has roughly 4 million times the mass of the Sun, a kind of gravitational anchor for everything around it. The spiral arms we see in illustrations aren't rigid structures like fixed rails. They're actually regions of higher density that move through the disk, something like traffic waves on a highway. These density waves compress gas and make it easier for new stars to form, giving the arms that more prominent look. And wrapping around all of this is a large halo, a more spherical and diffuse structure that envelops the galaxy and hosts globular clusters, old stellar populations, and of course, the bulk of that mysterious dark matter. All the stars in the Milky Way, our sun included, orbit the galactic center at impressive speeds. The solar system sits about 27,000 light years from the center and takes roughly 225 million years to complete one lap, a galactic year. To put that in perspective, the last time we were in roughly the same position in our cosmic year, the first dinosaurs were appearing on Earth. On a human scale, we don't feel this motion, but it's key to the overall stability of the disk and to the fine choreography of its internal structures. And the Milky Way doesn't live in isolation. It's part of the so-called local group, a set of neighboring galaxies that includes Andromeda, M31, and the Triangulum Galaxy, M33. They all interact gravitationally, and in the distant future, our galaxy and Andromeda will collide, giving rise to a new galactic structure. With so much going on, the inevitable question pops up. Where exactly are we in this immense disk? Our little solar system is parked in one of the spiral arms, surrounded by billions of stars and nebulae. And believe it or not, knowing that address precisely can be more important than it seems. Our location may have been one of the key factors that allowed life to arise and evolve with relative stability on our planet. To understand where we are, we first need to understand how stars orbit through the galaxy. Some move so fast or so close to us that we can detect their motion over just a few years, which lets us draw increasingly detailed maps. By using the proper motions of stars measured over long periods, astronomers can reconstruct trajectories, estimate distances, and, most importantly, make sense of the architecture of the disk we're immersed in. Historically, this was much trickier. In the past, astronomers like William Herschel tried to map the Milky Way by counting stars in different directions in the sky. The idea made sense, but there was an invisible villain, interstellar dust, which absorbs and scatters light, making some regions look emptier than they really are. Ignoring that effect led to distorted conclusions, like the impression that the sun sat at the center. A big leap in understanding came when astronomers began analyzing the distribution of globular clusters, swarms of very old stars that form a kind of shell around the galaxy. By studying where those clusters were concentrated, 
They concluded that the galactic center lies in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius, putting to rest the idea of Earth or the Sun being central. Since then, technology has taken over. Today we have far more sophisticated techniques and instruments, capable of peering through the curtains of dust, using different wavelengths and measuring star positions and motions with almost unimaginable precision. Among the missions that change the game, the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Telescope is a watershed. Gaia measures the position and motion of millions upon millions of stars using the technique of parallax. As Earth orbits the Sun, we observe a tiny apparent wobble in the position of nearby stars relative to the more distant background. With precision astronomy, that tiny effect reveals interstellar distances with unprecedented accuracy. Thanks to this kind of data, the map of the Milky Way has come into sharper focus. Today we know that our cosmic home sits on the inner edge of the Orion Arm, also called the Local Arm, a smaller structure that bridges larger arms like Perseus and Sagittarius. The Milky Way, being a barred spiral, has a complex network of arms where giant clouds of gas and dust pile up, the stellar nurseries. And it was precisely in this relatively calm neighborhood that the solar system set up shop. We're far from regions of higher stellar density and intense radiation, which favors the long-term stability needed for life to flourish here. As for our motion, it's anything but trivial. While we orbit the center at around 828,000 kilometers per hour, we don't follow a perfect circle. Our path is slightly elliptical and also wobbles above and below the disk's mid-plane. At the moment, we're about 55 light-years above that plane. It may sound small on the galaxy's scale, but this oscillation affects how much interstellar matter we pass through along our journey. And as a result, the rate of impacts, exposure to radiation, and other conditions in the cosmic environment we're immersed in. The best current estimates place the Sun between approximately 25,800 and 27,200 light-years from the galactic center. These numbers aren't fixed forever. As telescopes and satellites refine their measurements, we sharpen our sense of distance and position. That's science. A map that gains clearer contours with every new observation. Knowing where we are isn't just geographic curiosity. There's a concept called the galactic habitable zone. In broad strokes, it's the swath of the disk where conditions seem most favorable for the emergence and maintenance of complex life. Too close to the center and radiation is intense. Supernovae are more frequent and gravitational interactions are strong enough to scramble planetary orbits. Too far from the center and you lack metallicity, the abundance of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, needed to form rocky planets like Earth. Being in an intermediate position, like ours, combines stability with a supply of essential elements. In other words, our neighborhood isn't just pretty. From an astrobiological point of view, it's a great place to be. Looking at all this together, the shape of the bar, the spiral arms, the halo, the orbital speed, the oscillations, and the distances, is like assembling a cosmic scale puzzle. And the most impressive part is that we're doing it while inside the very piece we're trying to understand. It's no small feat that we've managed to break free of the illusion of centrality, pierce the veil of dust, and recognize the Milky Way as a dynamic system of which we're only a tiny component. From this ocean of data, it's become possible to better understand the geometry of the arms, the tilt of the disk, stellar streams, and even scars left by ancient mergers with smaller galaxies. This refined cartography helped put the solar system in its proper context, a modest address on the inner edge of the Orion Arm, from which we can watch the show without standing in the eye of the storm. Even with all that, it's good to remember we still know only a fraction of what there is to know. The map will keep improving, estimates will be refined, and new details about the bar, the arms, and the halo will emerge. We might be surprised by the disk's thickness, by stellar streams that reveal ancient mergers, or by the exact mechanisms that sustain the arms. It's in science's nature to adjust the route as it measures the terrain more precisely. The Milky Way is immense, and our little corner is almost nothing within that structure. But that almost nothing is everything to us. It's where the sun was born, where Earth formed, where life appeared, and where we tell stories about the sky. The fact that we've managed to locate ourselves with this level of precision from inside the whirlwind itself is already amazing. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone who also likes to look up and ask, where exactly are we in the universe? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.